G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be playing the, uh, nice. Type 69. It's the sex number, okay guys? It's very funny. Anyway, the Type 69 is probably one of the most interesting t tanks in the entire game. The reason being is because it has quite literally the worst APFSDS shell in the game. Does that make it a bad APFSDS shell? No, actually. It really doesn't. I mean, the Orbital HVG is also a contender for the worst AP APFSDS shell in the game, but I think its high velocity sort of compensates for it being a, a bad shell. That and its reload rate. However, on the Type 69, you're faced with a uh, pretty hefty reload. At the moment, on this tank, I believe it's something like 9 seconds somewhere, and my tank reloading skill is almost, you know, complete. The Type 69 is probably one of the first completely Chinese tanks in the entire game. And uh, it's it's not bad, honestly. It's good fun. It's a great challenge. And I think 8.0 tanks is a fantastic spot for for the game. It's just great. I, I love it, honestly. 8.0. If I could get fewer matches against the sort of pay-to-win, if you will, tanks, the, the, the up-tiered premiums. Oh, sorry, the... the you know, under-tiered premiums, then uh, I think it would be a much better matchmaker overall. I think it would be great. I think it would be fantastic. But, you know, here we are. So we're going to make the most of it. First shot onto the shot Carl Delay is uh, fatal because it goes to the ammunition rack. The high velocity on the uh, on the APFSDS shell is really, really nice. And again, shooting that right-hand side of the uh, Centurion hull gives me a perfect ammo rack straight away. Now I'm going to wait for that long-ass reload and hopefully go for this... Uh, IFV around the corner. You can see him there, and I managed to balk the shot to the point where, yep, I'm getting hammered with 80 gems. You can see my uh, my teammates in the T55AM save me, and thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. I would have loved some uh, <laughs> some smoke to uh, help me repair, but um, yep, that's okay. So in this one, we're going to show you exactly what happens in an up tier. You're going to find yourself in uh, a couple of situations where you're not going to be doing too hot. You see, I've got two kills here, and my entire team has pretty much taken control of the map in the first two minutes of the game. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Uh, two minutes of the game, and uh, we pretty much have map control. This is pretty much it. There's, there's going to be no more sort of epic gamer stuff. It's just pretty much rushing the spawn now. And that's what you'll find yourself doing in the Type 69. It's one of those tanks that's uh, it's a good gunner. If you can get into spots and uh, and use the gun, then it's a really, really good tank. Because for the most part, you don't have depression. You don't have any uh, good reload. You don't have a good turret slewing rate. You're not particularly fast either. And the shell that you have isn't exactly amazing. However, you do have a good rangefinder. I believe... I'm not quite sure if it's a laser rangefinder, but you do have some sort of decent rangefinding capabilities. And the shell you get, of course, is APFSDS, which, by calling it the worst APFSDS shell in the game, I would also make note that it is APFSDS. It is extremely fast. And in the case of 8.0, armor isn't really the focus, it's more mobility. And so a lot of tanks don't actually have armor. Which means that you can one-shot them if you get the right spot. So I would recommend playing this play this tank by sort of setting it up. You can see here, there's a chieftain on the side here, exiting the spawn. I managed to take him out. You can see another chieftain and a couple of uh, centurions or shot culls, something like that. So I'm going to wait for that long-ass reload again. Go for the shot on the left-hand side. I end up hitting the uh, the driver and I believe the gunner. But uh, he's practically, as you can see, got not a lot of ammo in that uh, front of the turret. I see what I thought was a... I, I thought that was a Merkava, honestly, because of the uh, the weird turret. I thought, surely there's no, you know, later Merkava in the game. It looked like it to me, but it was a uh, an XM803. I get that M48 pattern because he is currently a threat to me because the uh, other guy is, is repairing his fuel tank. And I'm getting absolutely hammered by everything. This is the sort of... Uh, Thing that happens when you when your team wins the entire map you end up converging on the spawn and everyone still has spawns left now you can see obviously because my crew isn't the best i'm taking a long time to repair 
there's a helicopter that's still up and he's going to start pummeling me with uh, with stuff but at the same time i've also got a shot cull sitting in spawn trying to shoot out my engine and shooting out the engine is not really what i want but it's better than having it set on fire it seems like he's having trouble and maybe he's about to load the hash because uh, or the heat or something because he manages to get my radiator he's about to take out my engine again and I'm just going to be here for a fairly long reload. The uh, Type 69 is actually a really fun tank. It's not particularly fast. It's sort of like a T-55, but a little bit more Pepega. It doesn't get APHE, uh, which at one point, you know, you might say doesn't really make a difference. But at the same time, fighting stuff like the Leopard 1, the AMX-30, the uh, Patterns, and sometimes the Chieftains from the sides... You'll find that you start to struggle with uh, certain smaller caliber shells and heat FS in some cases. But at the same time, I would say that uh, fighting stuff like the MBT-70, APHE is uh, kind of dead and not really something that should be utilized as much. I go for the shot on the ammo rack on the shot and it seems like he's completely out of ammo. So yeah, that was a bit of a, bit of a sad react only. And there I go. I get myself... Type 74 g that beautiful APFSDS shell. Look where it penetrates. This is a fantastic shot. Have a look at that. Well done to the uh, Type 74. But onto the next match, and you're going to see exactly what happens when you brothel stomp in this tank. It is, it is so capable, but it is only capable if you continue the aggression. This is the way Russian tanks work. In fact, there's a map called Port Novorossiysk, and it used to be a really good top tier map when top tier was. Uh, you know, that 8.0, 8.3 level. Honestly, this is my favorite tier in the whole game. This sort of spot here where armor is starting to not matter. And you've got the beginning of sort of stabilized tanks. And you can also play sneaky with the unstabilized tanks because they're, you know, fast in most cases. Or they have just huge guns. And you can see here, I'm going to start jousting with a, uh, a warrior. I can't quite get the range on this though, but that's okay because I have a range finder. And eventually when I get the, uh, you know, get the, the target, I can just dial in the rangefinder and get myself the exact distance that I need. And with the APFSDS shell, you're pretty much set. I'm going to take some cover here by the, uh, by the corner of this building and using the pillar as well. And I'm going to shoot between the building and the pillar, which gives me a little bit more sort of uh, room to play. You can see on the other side of that pillar, the far side, something is being lobbed in my direction. I managed to get an absolutely gorgeous hull break on the warrior who is, I believe, returning back to help his friendlies, which is a bit of a mistake. You can see I've also got a couple of things over by the far side there. I think that's a pattern. I think there's also an M103 and a Bradley. And I managed to hit the Bradley, but I don't know what I took out on him. It wasn't really valuable, so I guess I'm not going to worry. I managed to go for another shot, and I don't quite get anything. I'm, I'm kind of taking cover behind this tree and using the uh, the motorway as a uh, as a sort of makeshift cover, and then my breach gets taken out. This is not good news for me because uh, the breach is the thing that makes this tank good, obviously, being a, you know, a, a machine that can fire back. So I'm going to angle my side just gently enough to get me into cover, and I'm going to sit and repair when you're, when you're looking to, to maneuver sideways, try and move in a sort of zigzag formation. Uh, don't ever try and move, uh, I guess, straight up. Don't move flat up, especially well, when you're facing heat FS. When you're facing APFSDS, it's a completely different story. You want to angle as many components as you can uh, away from your opponents. But in the case of heat FS, where you're more likely to get eaten up by tracks or side skirts or uh, fuel tanks on the front of the tank, well, you're going in this sort of zigzag motion, or at least in this sort of side scrapey type motion, is extremely, be extremely, extremely beneficial. So, I can hear myself a Helimachopter, and I don't like Helimachopters, especially the AH-1G, because everyone and their mother has an AH-1G, and uh, the best thing a uh, helicopter needs is a dart shell. You see, APFSDS is, in this case, not really great, because it only has 120 millimeters of 30 degree pen, and about 200 millimeters of vertical pen, which is really awful, honestly. I think I, I think even the HVG does something a little bit better than that. It's got a uh, higher rate of fire, it's got a uh, higher muzzle velocity, 
and despite not having the damage output, I would consider it a better shell, just because it is so, like, it, it's so deadly at range, especially on that angled pen. But the uh, the Type 69 doesn't really get that, because it just doesn't have the rate of fire. It's got a, a longer reload than most of the NATO MBTs, and it also doesn't get any thermals. I used to think that, uh, you know, thermals, eh, it's not a big deal, it's only on the gunner site, but it can help you spot targets that are really far away, covered in dust and, and shrouded in, like, clouds or rain, and it is extremely helpful. It is so undervalued, and honestly, this thing doesn't get thermals, and it puts it at a huge disadvantage. I guess this is why it's 8.0. It does get night vision devices, but I don't really consider that to be anything. I would almost rather just turn the gamma up on my screen than use NVD. I don't really consider it to be that remarkable, to be honest. So, what are we going to do now? You can see my team is absolutely stomping, and this is exactly what the Type 69 is good for. It is good to uh, assist with the stomp. It doesn't really make plays as such. It sort of supports, sits on the sidelines, takes the, uh, you know, does the damage, uses that APFSDS shell at uh, longer ranges, or in this case, on the flanks. And honestly, I enjoy this. I really enjoy this tank. It's so fun. And being one of the first Chinese tr like tanks that is unique to the tree, it's just nice to finally grind for something that isn't copy-paste, which is what a lot of people were, you know, complaining about originally. That's an M103. I bounced. He balks. I should have probably loaded the heat here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the turret ring. Now, the M103 has a really weak turret ring, but uh, Vickers MBT looked juicier, and I decided, you know, I'm going to go for the Vickers. I balk it, because I'm me, and uh, <laughs> I'm in a bit of a situation here. Again, we're looking at uh, pushing the enemies back to their spawn. We're sort of spawn pushing them. And it's now become a fight of, uh, you know, how long will it take till the enemies just stop running out of spawns. I barrel the M103, and uh, I'm going to go now for the Vickers. You can see the Vickers is sticking his bum out. You can see he's got his engine bay out. He's angled that back. I get a shot on the driver and the track. The driver is important because then he can't maneuver the tank out of the way. And it also saves me from uh, any other tanks that spawn, allows me to pick up this M16, which I have no idea why it was in the, in the match to begin with, and also allows me to get a little bit of time. This Vickers MBT is going to be extremely durable in this position because I'm only shooting the gunner, oh, the, sorry, the driver, and the APFSDS shell is not is just over-penetrating. I get for the next shot, but um, yeah, the driver hasn't come back. The APFSDS shell is a really good shell, but you don't get any of that sort of internal spalling on lightly armored targets. You have to go for the heat shell, and this is where I load the heat. It has more penetration. It is, in uh, theory, a better shell for closer ranges because it, it does have that drop. But at the same time, I think I want to keep using the APFSDS shell because I can sort of laser focus the weak spots, and I have a stabilizer to do that. I just find it really nice that the, uh, you know, the APFSDS shell just just does its job. The M103 gets itself uh, yeeted on, and there's a Centurion that spawns in front of my face. He's probably stock, and so he bounces off me. And considering that he's probably only loaded the AP, I just angle my tank. That's all I need to do, just angle the armor to the point where he's not going to be able to bounce. This is, after all, basically a T-54 hull. Honestly, the, uh, the Type 69 is good fun. It's nothing incredibly special, but it is extremely good fun when you have a team that uh, functions and you also have someone that you can shoot at. Not having the NVD is a bit of a letdown, but honestly, in some cases, you don't really need it. Or well, sorry, having the thermals, uh, it would be would be nice. You also don't get smokes, which is kind of kind of sad. But you know what? You don't need to if you're not getting shot at, and that's the way you play the Type 69. Nice. Anyway, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a Merry Christmas as well, and I hope you enjoy that too. But until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.